I think we're in the process of the chastisement in many, 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 many parts of the world already with the suffering, the corruption, the war, the deceit, and basically the vile behavior of many, many people. You see very clearly the connections that you made to uh, La Salette, to Akita, because that message that you quoted before about the betrayals of the priests and the bishops that that echoes so well with Akita and uh, and with La Salette, um, they too talking about the infidelity of the clergy. Um, what in in your perspective, what is that? Um, the severity of the betrayal of the clergy to Christ, to his church, to his church's teachings. Um, and where do you think we're at in the world today on that score? I think the, you know, uh, I've always been amazed um, that so many clergy have failed to speak out. If I have a lament now as an adult, as people who either saw what was going on in the seminary when they were there, because I've spoken to so many priests over the last 40 years of, of the shenanigans that they saw going on. I think if I have a major disappointment, it's how they have remained silent. Hmm. And so I, I think that the, the, the world is basically going the way of the church and vice versa. And if you look at the Old Testament, it, Yahweh always actually punished the clergy first for them not speaking out. And so I think this gradual decline is increasing. And I think due to priests being canceled, I think there's increased fear to where I literally spoke to a uh, a priest yesterday who was uh, he was doing masses of reparation. And he asked, you know, in, in terms of looking even at the holy face, a novena. And, and what good could I be if I now challenge my bishop? So there's been this aspect of so much of the clergy has been complicit by not speaking out. And we're here. Could you imagine when Roe versus Wade or even before in 1973, at least in the United States, and we literally just saw it just this week. Um, France enshrine abortion in their constitution. So, mm -hmm. so you want to talk about the clergy not speaking up, but I'd like to say this, in, in even in defense of the clergy, we have, I, I can't speak to other countries, but we have over th uh, 350 million people in the United States, and we have X number of hundreds of thousands of clergy. We know, I think there's 400,000 masses a day being said in the United States, give or take, so it doesn't matter. But um, could you imagine if just the people spoke up more of people like you doing what you're doing and the things that we're doing now, if more people spoke up? And could you imagine if the clergy all w walked arm and on, arm down Constitution Avenue in, in, in actually defiance of what government was doing with all the bishops and the cardinals? But it's very easy. It's like in an administration, um, in any government administration, there's something called the plumb book or schedule C's. Those are the government presidential appointees. Some need Senate approval, others don't. Most are just appointed. There's roughly 4,000 of those in any U.S. administration that are appointed, but there's just one president and everybody speaks about President Biden or President Trump or President Bush or Obama or Clinton. It's always just the president. But there's thousands of people behind that person enforcing the rules and regulations in basically the, the types of policy that that White House is looking to implement. It's If I could say one thing to the, to the question of clergy, I think due to just the sheer numbers, People need to begin to speak up. You know, the truth, if spoken by one, is still the truth. 